Hey folks, here's a practice technique called chaining. Incrementally add to scales and tune phrases that you're working on. So let's say you're learning the fourth quarter of Arkansas Traveler. You could play the first note, then the first two notes, first three notes, first four notes, on and on and on. Here's why this practice tool is a good idea. You learn scales, exercises, and tunes more deeply. You gamify the practice, making it more fun and productive. Finally, you're learning to improvise. Chaining creates a sense of play in your practice because it gets you to tinker with existing melodies in new ways. Cool, so let's get more into this. There's a lot of different ways you can do chaining. So we're going to start with a really simple exercise of chaining a simple D major scale. So the whole scale. So to do this, to chain it, we would start with the first note, then the first two notes, then the first three notes, until you have the whole thing. This is called forwards chaining. So why, if there's a forwards chaining, there must be a backwards chaining, right? So we can start at the end, the last note of it, and then play the last two notes going backwards. And by the way, it helps to end your, each, le each length of the chain with a throwaway bow. That's this, the throwaway bow. So we can do the first two notes, going backwards, the first three notes, first four notes, and so on, okay? We can also do forwards and backwards chaining on each step. I learned this practice variation on my trip to India, and so we can do, let's say we start at the beginning, we can do the first two notes. So notice we're going up and down, and now we're gonna do the first three notes going up and down first four notes, and so on. So some other variations, like secondary variations you can do to make this interesting. You always want to make your practice interesting and fun. Somehow you can add rhythms to it. That's hoedown. You could also add slur patterns, maybe play the whole pattern in one bow. Two, two notes per bow, slur two. And then remember, as I mentioned in the beginning of this lesson, you could use chaining to practice any difficult part of a tune. I use the example of Arkansas Traveler, the fourth quarter. And you may find, as you do it, that one step is particularly hard, like... So you may want to stay longer on that step. Instead of just charging forward with the chain, you may be like, well, I've hit upon, I've just learned what's hard for me. I'm gonna stay with this thing and maybe go deeper on that. Maybe you have to go A to D3 a little bit. Just kind of a new chain, and then you would go back to the bigger chain and keep going. All right. So we've learned how to chain single notes to make scales and build tune phrases. But there's another way to think about chaining. You can chain parts of tunes. So let's go back to the example of Arkansas Traveler. Let's say you've used chaining to practice each individual quarter of the A part and feeling pretty good about all those quarters, but you're having trouble putting the whole, whole thing together in a flowing way. Well, you can use chaining to get going on that. Chaining will help you with that. So what that means is you could play the first quarter of the tune. 
So we're doing forwards chaining now. So now we'll do the first two quarters of the tune. If that is a struggle, then stay with that a little bit. Loop on it a little bit. So if you were to loop on the first two quarters, you would have something like... Okay, so let's say you get that down, you're good with that, then we move on and do chain the first three quarters of the tune. And then the first four quarters, or the whole A part. So, as you can see, with chaining, you're going to start to get a sense of flow if you practice this way. Now, we can also do backwards chaining with parts of tunes. So with Arkansas Traveler, the A part, we'd start with the fourth quarter. Then you would chain together the third and fourth quarters. Then the second, third, and fourth quarters, and so on. So as you can tell, not only are you going to get a, learn the tune more deeply, but you're going to be able to play each part better as well with this practice. The other great thing about this is that it gets you to be less dependent on playing the melody beginning to end, and it'll start to open your mind musically to other ideas. You'll start to hear each little part as its own musical idea, maybe its own melody instead of connected to the bigger melody. And what I'm trying to say is that ultimately it will help you to improvise and be a creative musician. But don't even worry about that, just use it to have fun. Just think of it as a fun way to make practice a little bit more like a game that, yeah. So anyhow, thank you for watching this little video on chaining. And let me know if it's helpful. And if you discover a way to do this that I haven't talked about, please leave a comment on the YouTube lesson or on the Fiddlehead lesson page. Just tell me how you used it. Even if you did, you know, what kind of scale you did, what kind of exercise you did. I would love to hear from you because all the stuff I've learned, I've pretty much learned by teaching you guys. Okay, so cool. Thanks for watching. Go to fiddlehead.com for a progressive step-by-step -step course outline, color-coded tabs, play-along tracks, sheet music, and much more. Thanks for watching the video Excellent. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.